I'm going to present a relatively simple view of the challenges to improve programming with our current available data. So coverage is critical for nutrition programming. And here I'm paying tribute to the Lancet series. Uh, the densely worded diagram presents all of the different recommended evidence-based interventions throughout the life cycle. And the bulleted managed community-based management of, of severe acute malnutrition is just one part of the overall program. And UNICEF, we recognize the weaknesses in the implementation of the management of severe acute malnutrition. At the same time, we cannot dedicate 100% of our resources to treatment. UNICEF has to maintain an appropriate balance between prevention and treatment. But with that in mind, we go into the data. In 2010, the nutrition cluster, or the equivalent in countries, described their own methods for the calculation of annual caseloads, right? And so these were calculations where the population 6 to 59 months of age times the prevalence of SAM times a conversion factor that was decided upon in country time plus a safety margin which was decided upon in country. And so in some countries, they set their annual caseload estimates to a feasible number and then they achieved those targets. In other countries, they set their caseload they calculated their caseload as rigorously as possible and then struggled and didn't reach those targets, right? So from 2012, a standardized calculation was insisted upon by the regional director of, of, of UNICEF and we, we used the Garen data with following the calculation defi uh, defined by Mark Myatt. And this was, as you've seen already, the population 659 months times the prevalence of SAM times the conversion factor of 2.6. And this was well accepted throughout the region, and ex but not all over the world, as we've already seen by the Lancet crowd. So I present to you, uh, oops, I'll skip this slide because you all know it. Um, this is a map of the geographic coverage of the management of severe acute malnutrition program in northern Nigerian states. And Mark has already explained some of the issues with geographical coverage. Uh, I won't get into that. Uh, but the pink areas represent local government areas where we have a management of severe acute malnutrition program in operation. And these were chosen based on the prevalence and the population density of those LGAs, right? And in 2012, the program reported to have met 100% of their targeted caseload in the northern states with only 30% of geographical coverage, right? So we recognize the incomplete delivery of services across the northern states and the problems that we have in these data. And we're attempting to address this with the significant new financial support. Now, let's follow with a more complex example, taking into account the coverage survey results. This map represents the estimated number of children with severe acute malnutrition based on population and the nutrition survey from May 2011, right? So the regions with the highest, uh, highest number of children are Tilaberi, way in the, in the west, and Maradi in the center, right? But the population concentration here in Maradi has proved to be very fertile ground. The Maradi, Maradi Niger has one of the strongest management of acute malnutrition programs in the world. There are several NGOs there, such as Befen, Forsani, MSF, ACF, Alima, that support health districts with very high quality care and training for other regions and other countries, right? In 2011, one third of the new admissions in Niger were delivered in Maradi. If you expect to find high coverage anywhere, you might expect to find it there. But let's look at the, the, the details. The prevalence of severe acute malnutrition based on weight for height Z scores was 1.6% in 2000, May 2011, right? Then there are reported 102,000 case, new, new cases treated in Maradi in 2011, right? With a coverage estimate of 
in MyID from the, from the five region coverage survey, then correct, assuming no overreporting error, the annual caseload corrected by the coverage estimate would be around 425,000 cases, right? But the population of MyID, the population six to 59 months of MyID is only 578,000 children, right? So if each case was one child, this would correspond to 68% of the child population. Now let's assume that half, that, that, that have over-reporting by 50%. So there was only 50,000 cases that were treated. Still, we're talking about 34% of the child population. So these calculations are improbable when reviewing the SAM prevalence of 1.6%. So why are there such discrepancies? They're looking at the inputs to the annual caseload estimates. The prevalence of severe acute malnutrition can be greatly overestimated with bad quality data, but this doesn't explain our problem, right? The population estimates, there are errors. Some countries have better quality data than others. The prevalence to incidence conversion factor is a standard model that we force on a non-standardized world. And we know the conditions are different in Chad than they are in Senegal, but it's the best method that we have so far. So then we come to the coverage estimates. Now, when I've talked to Saul Guerrero, he talks about the data collection on the community level, I'm completely convinced, right? But surveys are tricky beasts. Let's go into a little bit around the surveys. Now, for validation of the coverage estimate of the Niger survey, as far as I know, there's, we have to have direct estimates to compare that coverage survey. But as far as I know, we don't have any other direct estimates to compare them to. But there are estimates of the IYCF indicators. So we can look at IYCF indicators with LQS samples compared to those with more normal sampling techniques. I want to look at the measures of exclusive breastfeeding with LQS in Liberia. This is a 2011 survey done, support with USAID, by measure evaluation. I used to work for measure evaluation, measure. So, gosh, I hope it, they did a good job. So, looking at these results, you see the national level results here in Liberia from different surveys range from 22 to 34 percent, right? But then when we look at the county level results from the LQAS estimates, they range from 77 to 93 percent. And these are two to three times higher than the results from the national surveys, right? Just another quick example, in the Nigeria LQAS baseline household survey of 2006, this was done in collaboration between Harvard and Liverpool School of Tropical Health. Here, the measure of exclusive breastfeeding in the Nigeria LQAS baseline household survey produces estimates that are three to nine times higher than those of the regional estimates, right? So there are issues here comparing tangerines to clementines, if you will, and the issues of seasonality and other confounding factors, but this really doesn't explain the orders of magnitude of difference in these estimates, right? And so the lesson learned, I feel here, is really that the sampling methods that require really the employment of large number of teams complicates the training and the testing and the supervision of data collection. And poor training and standardization and supervision leads to poor quality data, which leads to poor quality estimates. So this is what we have to be concerned about. And we can try to address this with presentation of data quality indicators. So just like to ask if we could present data quality indicators into the coverage survey reports. And I don't, I'm guessing that a lot of this work has already been done, that I just haven't seen it. But uh, these are different recommendations that are coming from the nutrition specialists working in our country offices. That, for example, you could look at the analysis of number of identified cases by the data collection points, the minimum, maximum, mean, median, you could look at the distribution of cases by, by the MUAC, less than 115 millimeters, bilateral edema, reported no appetite. You could also look at the quality of MUAC measures, the accuracy and precision of the anthropometrists, the digit preference, the flag data, the use of colored versus non-colored non MUAC strips. And in our nutrition surveys in Western Central Africa, through, after the standardization exercises that we do in the training, the MUAC measures 
even with our best country teams, have a technical error of measurement of five millimeters. So with these exact measures of MUAC, for example, in a coverage survey, we could calculate a range of confidence around those estimates, around the reported measure. So now I'd like to race through program data as fast as I can. Um, here in the graphic we have trends in weekly reporting. Niger is currently treating about 330,000 cases, new cases, a year. And these data here are critical for monitoring trends. And if the biases remain constant in these data, we can interpret the variation as real changes. So here, where you see FIT marked in the column, this corresponds to the end of Ramadan. And you can see that the new admissions dropped considerably. There's, so this is important, but there's real serious data quality issues in program data. New admissions have often been confused with the number of children in the program. Also, if the data are aggregated at too high of a level, then they're not useful for, for making any program decisions. And collecting data only on new admissions is insufficient. We need data on stocks and program exits also to validate the program operation and the quality of the reporting, the activity. So with the rapid increase of the scale of programming, we often, this often has led to serious quality issues. And without the program data, we do not address these quality issues. And this is very problematic, right? So the correct reporting on, on the management of severe acute malnutrition will help to integrate the program into regular healthcare delivery. And the medical leadership in many, most countries, they do not buy into the community-based programming, and they haven't taken on their appropriate role that they, that they need to to make these, the, these programs take off. So they need to be included in the inpatient care, and they need to be included in the total program supervision to ensure ownership in country. The program data also make, needed to make sure that the lives are saved by the, by the interventions, to make sure that we avoid stockouts, that we treat keep the children with antimalarials and antibiotics where, where necessary, and to also ensure that we integrate the preventive interventions, such as the nutrition wash minimum package. In terms of program data needs, we should have real-time data on new admissions, stocks, and program exits. And without these data, there's really no identification or response to the critical events that cripple program delivery. And this is the work of systems building. And we're getting closer to have the functional tools that we need to, to, to complete this task. And for the money that we have invested in these programs, this is a minimal point to achieve. To address these data challenges overall, sorry, um, we'd like to ask this group for an analysis framework for improved understanding of the annual caseloads and program data compared to the coverage estimates, right? Also, recommendations for what types of program evaluation should be conducted when, and timely production of results for critical program manages, management decisions prior to the hunger season in countries. And for coverage surveys of large-scale programs, we'd like to ask for standardized, robust, and cost-appropriate sampling methods, data collection in about one month, and standardized reporting models, including data quality measures. So to end, I'd like to, 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 to clarify that prevention and treatment are two sides of the same coin. The management of severe acute malnutrition program has given health clinics in many countries the reason to exist. And we have to continue to build on the energy that is generated by this visual proof of effective programming, right? Coverage is critical, but without quality program data, the coverage estimates are less relevant. And in this, I mean that when we don't have coverage, when we don't have program data, we often know what the problems are before we even step up to the plate. So timely, lastly, the timely accurate, regular coverage estimates should be used to modify and improve our program implementation.
Thank you very much.